genital warts or condyloma acuminata is the topic. And essentially what we're talking about are these lesions on the skin and for the most part in the genital area, although they can also appear in the mucous membranes. Now the cause or etiology is rather important. These are sexually transmitted. It can be definitely thought of as an STD and they're transmitted via skin-to-skin -skin contact. And they're found greater in the immunocompromised population. I see immunocompromised. And the type of virus that is infecting these patients is known as HPV, human papilloma virus. And in particular, when we're talking about genital warts, we're talking about types 6 and 11, HPV type 6 and HPV type 11. Now, human papillomavirus, in addition to causing genital warts, is of significant importance because it also causes cervical dysplasia. And cervical dysplasia can be detected on a pap smear And the characteristic finding is very important to know is you will see these cells known as coilocytes. And just to illustrate, here's a normal cell. Here's a normal cervical cell. And a coilocyte will look something like this. It will have a very large nucleus and it will be surrounded by this halo and that is essentially a sign of cervical dysplasia caused by HPV. Now what's really important is that HPV can also eventually lead to cervical cancer. So as you can see this virus and its many subtypes not only cause warts, but they also cause cervical dysplasia and cervical cancer. So what are the symptoms? What does this appear like? Well, they're basically lesions that if you were to draw them from an angle where you're looking at it from its side, they're attached by the stalk and they're known as pedunculated lesions. And if you look at it from the front, they'll appear as clusters, like that. And they're known to be various colors, such as pink or gray, sometimes even described as flesh-colored. And they're described either as polyps or papules or raised lesions. All are appropriate ways of describing them. And as I mentioned, they appear in clusters. And sometimes I've also seen them being uh, called uh, or referred to as cauliflower-like lesions. And of course, uh, we are talking about the genital areas. So, uh, of course, uh, we have in males the penis and the anus. And in women, we have the vulva and also the anus as well. In terms of diagnosis, really it's a clinical diagnosis for the most part. Of course, as I previously mentioned, pap smears can be done to detect uh, cervical dysplasia, although that's more for uh, dysplasia rather than warts. A biopsy can be done if necessary to uh, come to a diagnosis of HPV-caused uh, genital warts. In terms of treatment, really mechanical removal of some sort, such as surgical excision, and also a lot of topical treatments are used. I'll give you one example. Uh, podophyllin can be used topically. And it's also important to make sure that you treat the sex partners 
because if you don't, then there will be reinfection involved. Prevention. There is a vaccine available. It's a relatively uh, new vaccine for HPV, in particular HPV types 6 and 11. And it's recommended for females aged 9 to 26. All right, let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. 24-year-old man comes to the clinic because of two bumps on his penis and scrotum. The lesions have been there for approximately seven months and have been getting progressively larger. They are not painful. He is sexually active with two female partners who are both on oral contraceptive pills, so they do not use barrier contraception. He had chlamydia urethritis last year. Temperatures 96, physical exam shows 3 millimeter flesh-colored non-tender lesion with a heaped-up appearance on the shaft of his penis and a 4 millimeter lesion with a similar appearance on his scrotum. The remainder of the physical exam is unremarkable. A RPR, VDRL, and FTA ABS tests are all non-reactive. In addition to providing the appropriate treatment, he should be told that. Well, since these syphilis tests are all non-reactive, you know it's not syphilis. So, basically what we're talking about is an HPV-related wart. And of all the answer choices, the one that stood out for me is once they started talking about cervical cancer. His sexual partner should definitely be evaluated and told that they may be at increased risk for cervical cancer. And if, if indeed they are, then that definitely needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Uh, next question. A 24-year-old woman comes to the clinic for periodic health maintenance exam. She has no complaints. She exercises daily, eats a low-fat diet, drinks a couple of beers with the friends, and a social smoker. She has multiple sexual partners and uses OCPs as birth control. She does not use condoms because it is not as pleasurable. Blood pressure is 110, pulse is 60, physical exam is unremarkable. You perform a pelvic exam and send a pap smear to the lab. The results, which return five days later, show two superficial squamous cells with sharply demarcated and large perinuclear vacuoles and alterations in the chromatin pattern. They use the term colocytic atypia. At this time, the most correct statement about her condition is, well, this pap smear has shown coelocytes. And if you recall, these are those cells with the large nucleus and the halo that are characteristic of HPV, and in particular, HPV cervical dysplasia. So, of all the answer choices, the one that definitely jumps out is that she may be at increase for cervical cancer because HPV definitely can eventually progress to causing cervical cancer. And finally, a 37-year-old man comes to the clinic because of bright red blood on the toilet paper with bowel movements. He also feels bumps around his anus and wonders if they are hemorrhoidal masses. He tells you that he has had difficulty gaining weight in the past few years and admits to occasional heroin use and multiple sexual partners. On exam, he appears emaciated with temporal wasting and lipodystrophy of the face. There are multiple moist pink cauliflower-like papules surrounding the anus. Uh, DRE reveals goyak negative brown stool. He consents to what you think is appropriate management. At this time, you should. Well, the heroin use, multiple sexual partners, and the fact that he's losing a lot of weight combined with these genital warts really makes me think that he is immunocompromised. And if he is, you really need to figure out why. And without a doubt, the test I would do imme immediately is an HIV test, and that is choice E.